understanding intermediate accounting, financial ratios, and activity. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email and our phone number. And our source for these videos is a good textbook, Kiso and Wygant, that's been out for years. And the publisher is Wiley.com. We talked about the challenge of trying to communicate financial data to people who make decisions in a business. And we have, in this first bullet point, too much information, TMI. We have tons and tons of data as computers and the internet improves. We've got lots of data and it's hard to know what's important. The second thing is, is that as an accountant or finance person, you're going to need to explain financial data to people who are not financial or accounting experts. So you need to explain it in simple terms, in terms that are useful, and in terms that they can understand. Another way of saying that is, is what I call the elevator speech. If someone, maybe the CFO, the CEO, the head person of the company, asks you as the accountant how things are going in the business, can you in three or four sentences, something you might say on an elevator, tell them how things are going? That's the question that we hope we answer with financial ratios. In a, the prior video we talked about liquidity types of ratios and you can think about your checkbook. Liquidity ratios related to do I have enough cash in the system to pay obligations as they come due? Accounts payable, long-term debt, pay payroll, etc. This video talks about activity, which is how are you using your assets? How well do you use the money you've invested in your business as assets? I've switched to Excel and what I have here is Levi Jeans Company and some financials, both a balance sheet on the left and an income statement on the right to illustrate the ratios we use that we call activity. I'm going to scroll to the bottom of the page here. And you'll see three activity levels, and we use the term turnover here. And turnover, I want you to think about cash going out of the business and back in. We sell a product or service, we, get, we wait to get cash in the door. When we get that cash in the door, we use it to pay payrolls, salaries, we buy materials. We have cash go out the door, and this is a continuous cycle. So receivable turnover talks about how fast are we getting in those dollars? And specifically, for every dollar that we sell, how long does it take for that dollar to come back in? So we're going to take the sales number, net sales. And you can see our net sales up here of $100,000. And then we're going to look at average receivables, which is really accounts receivable. If you go up to the balance sheet, you'll see accounts receivable of $35,000. Average means that we're going to take the $35,000 balance at the end of the year, the $41,000 at the beginning, and we're going to average them to $38,000. So this formula takes that, if I click on it, that $38,000 in the denominator, there's $100,000 in the numerator, Here's our 100 again, right here. And what it says is, is that it takes about 2.63 times sales to collect all the money. So if for every $100,000 that I sell, I divide that by 38,000, and I get an idea of how fast the money's coming back in. How fast the money's coming back in. So. 100,000 over 38. When people ask me, uh, well, I've invested cash in my business and I'm not sure where all the cash went, the two biggest places that cash goes, where cash is used, is receivables, but also inventory. Receivables looked at the sales side, inventory looks at the cost side. You're obviously spending money, particularly if you're in a manufacturing environment, to create inventory. You're going to sell the inventory, we call that cost of goods sold, and the question is, for every dollar that I sell, I want to look at that as compared to the denominator of average inventory. 
Because what that's saying is, of the inventory that I have in my shelf, how fast am I selling it? The faster I sell it, the better. The higher the turnover, the better for inventory, because that means I'm getting the cash back in the door faster. So we're going to take our cost of goods sold, and if you go scroll back up to the income statement, here's $60,000 cost of sale. And we're going to take that and compare it to our inventory. Our inventory number, if we go to the balance sheet, is $120,000. And again, we want an average. We're going to take beginning of year, end of year, take an average. So we've got cost of sales divided by our average inventory of 108000 roughly. And what that indicates is how fast are we collecting on goods that we take off the shelf and sell to somebody as inventory. Receivables is how fast are we collecting dollars on sales, inventory turnovers, how fast are we collecting our inventory dollars, basically getting reimbursed for the cost of inventory. The last ratio is broader, it's asset turnover. We're going to take our net sales and compare it to our average total assets, regardless of what they are. Our total assets in blue here is 425000 Again, I took an average end of year and beginning of the year and made up a number of 413. So what we're saying is, is that for every dollar of sales, we're comparing that to our average total assets, which really is an indication of, of the money we have invested as assets, receivables, inventory, cash, and others. How fast are we selling compared to our total assets? Because the whole name of the game is to get dollars back in the door as quickly as you can. You'll see flipping back to PowerPoint that we have a profitability calculation that we'll get to on our next video and one on coverage which has to do with the ability to pay debt to creditors. So those are the next two videos. Another way of saying it on all three of these videos, I want you to think about activity videos as how we use assets. The first is receivables, how long is cash gone? Inventory turnover, same thing. How long is cash gone? But not looking at dollars sold, but inventory that we had go out the door. And asset turnover, how are we using the assets to generate sales? Think about that delivery man who drives a truck to repair people's plumbing. That truck is an asset. He's using that truck to go and provide a service and get paid. And the question is, how much did the truck cost? and how many dollars in sales of plumbing activity of plumbing sales is being generated using that plumber's truck. Think about that for asset turnover. That's the end of part nine. Here's our YouTube channel. You'll also see my account on Facebook for live one-on-one -on -one tutoring over the internet using gotomeeting.com. You can contact me through my website, my email, my phone number. Thanks very much and we'll see you next time.